This is a congenital posterior polar cataract in a three-year-old presenting, starting off with some xylocaine phenylephrine to dilate the pupil interoperatively and then some dispersive viscoelastic. A temporal uh, limbal corneal incision is made and some tripan blue is placed over the anterior capsule, painted on the anterior capsule. This is not so much for visualization as it is to reduce the elasticity of that capsule. These are very elastic capsules and are prone to running out. Some super viscous Helon 5 viscoelastic is injected in the anterior chamber to flatten the anterior capsule. And here we have a specially marked capsule axis forcep with 2.5 and 5 millimeter markings to help us guide the size of this capsular axis, which can be hard to control in these very young eyes. Uh, we note the elasticity of the capsule. The vector forces are quite different than in an adult eye. As you can see, we're basically turning and pointing almost to the center of the lens here to propagate this tear in a curvilinear fashion. The use of tripan blue does seem to help and uh, also the super viscous Helon 5 is flattened the anterior capsule to reduce the risk of running out very carefully using a shearing technique. Again, checking to make sure the size of the capsular axis should be about five and a half millimeters here. And at the end of the case, at the end of the capsular axis here, just turning into a bit of a shearing stretching technique here to finalize that capsular axis. This is a posterior polar cataract. You want to avoid any kind of hydrodissection, but this is more manual cortical disruption, just placing the chain cannula underneath the anterior capsule to disrupt the anterior cortex to facilitate removal, but there's no injection here. We don't want to risk blowing up that posterior capsule. We will do hydrodelineation, though, which helps to separate the endoepinucleus in some capacity, multilaminar here, which will help to facilitate uh, the removal of the lens segmentally. Here we're using the IA, uh, the polymer tip to uh, remove the uh, cortical material and the central nucleus. It's very soft, of course, and is uh, removed quite efficiently. Uh, there is this posterior opacity present here. We'll polish a bit of that capsule very carefully. To be careful, these capsules can sometimes and very often are thinner than normal. And just polishing that peripheral uh, capsule here, important here, as you'll see later, to reduce those cells that potentially proliferate onto the um, onto the posterior side of that lens. We can, can't really peel off that lens opacity, not surprisingly, but I am gonna now use a Singer sweeper. This is a very useful approach here to remove those anterior lens epithelial cells under the anterior capsule and the equatorial region. This will help reduce uh, postoperative lens epithelial cell proliferation and metaplasia, which can be a problem in these young eyes over time with exuberant uh, fibrosis and metaplasia that can cause capsular contraction and other issues in a pacification. Uh, this is a double-armed instrument with a bend on this, allows us th with this bevel tip to remove the lens epithelial cells quite efficiently. And uh, we will then um, irrigate out those uh, LECs as well as irrigate the posterior capsule to remove any kind of cells that may be present on the uh, capsule itself. We're now ready to place uh, the lens in the capsular bag, which we will use after the viscoelastic is injected. I'm using a three-piece acrylic lens here, uh, hydrophobic acrylic. Uh, the reason for this is that we are going to place this lens in a posterior optic buttonhole approach, and this is easier than a one-piece lens, although we have certainly captured one-piece lenses as well. I was nice in the bag, and I like put, like put it in the eye well first before I do the posterior rexus. Here we're using a 27-gauge needle with viscoelastic. Uh, here we're going to puncture the posterior capsule, place the bevel into the burger space, and inject viscoelastic. This is a cohesive here, and this will help keep vitreous back while we do the posterior capsular axis underneath the IOL. This is a micro forcep here, um, using here to propagate the capsular axis. This is a basically like an anterior capsular axis, but it's thinner, harder to control, and so frequent regrasp is important. And we only, we have have to make sure that this, this capsular axis is no greater than the optic, preferably about five millimeters or so here uh, to ensure we get good optic capture. Um, and this is again uh, performed in a central fashion here. This is the approach we're going to use here. Once we do this posterior rexus here, here under the IOL, uh, we will capture the optic through the capsular rexus. We put the lens in for just in case there's a problem, at least the lens is in the bag and we can then continue along here. But in this case, the rexus goes well. And it's also important to do this rexus to remove that central opacity. But more importantly, we can now place this lens in a posture up to buttonhole position without vitrectomy here. Because there really is no need for vitrectomy. There's no scaffold for lens epithelium to grow onto. The plastic here prevents that uh, that's captured here. Although there will be some proliferation in the peripheral capsule, 
uh, the plastic of the optic will prevent that from going into central visual axis, and there's no need to do vitrectomy. Hydra, the main incision, removing viscoelastic manually. These are very elastic eyes. They can collapse, so do it slowly. I don't go back with the IA here. We have a watertight incision, and we'll inject some Kenalog here, subtenons, for early postoperative inflammatory control.